taken from the Ultimate Killer Collection by Stuart Dandel. Dagmar Overby The Baby Burner Little is known about Dagmar Overby's early life. We do know that she had already been in trouble with the law as a child, and that when she was 12 years old she was sent away, returning after three years to her parents in Eringrahas. Not being able to control herself when she needed money, she ended up in trouble after being convicted of stealing. She served her first prison sentence on Finn, Denmark, in 1909. After her release, Dagmar found a job in a restaurant in Eringrahas. Here she met a waiter and gave birth to her first child, a boy. Unfortunately the boy died under mysterious circumstances, while Dagmar was living with her grandmother. In the following years she gave birth to several children, one while married to a gentleman named Nielsen, a very short-lived marriage, and another while working as a housekeeper for a man in Limmer, southeast of Randers, during 1913. Later, after her arrest, Dagmar admitted to having killed the child. After having gave birth yet again, she moved to the Danish capital Copenhagen, in 1915. Here she attempted to lead a straight life and opened up a candy store. After meeting a man named Finsen, she moved in with him and had another child. This poor mite also died of unknown reasons. The first known murder on record that Dagmar Overby committed, was at the home she shared with Svensson in 1916. Through an ad in the local newspaper, she made contact with a young unwed mother, Rasmund Jensen, who had just given birth to her second child. Dagmar said she was willing to adopt this child and received 12 kr, about $2, from Ms. Jensen. By the end of the same day, Dagmar Overby had strangled the baby and thrown it into the toilet at Copenhagen's largest cemetery, a truly disgusting act. Later, during her trial, she would claim that she didn't know why she had done it. A very flippant remark when one considers the delicate nature of the life she ended. In the following four years she murdered at least another seven children and probably more. During her questioning she confessed to having killed a total of 16 infants, though during her trial, the police only presented evidence for nine counts. Due to the motives for the killings, it's not surprising that the modus operandi to the crimes were always similar. First, Dagmar contacted desperate mothers through ads in the local newspaper, stating that for a small amount of money, she would adopt a child and keep them safe and well. She would then kill the child the same day after receiving payment. Her only drive was for financial gain. The way she murdered the children, varied between strangling and drowning, with the children always being disposed of somewhere close. Usually they were burnt in the fireplace, or hidden in the attic. One unnamed small child was very lucky after being found in her care. Fortunately it was sent to the government for care after Dagmar was sent to prison for stealing, between 1918 and 1919. The murders were only revealed in 1920 because a young mother, Caroline Ageson, had regretted the adoption and returned to Dagmar's home to see the child she had given away the day before. This was obviously impossible, and when Dagmar couldn't come up with a decent explanation of where the child was, the young mother became suspicious and told the police. The child's body was later found in a fireplace on Dagmar's property. During the trial it was claimed that Dagmar had probably been under the influence of intoxicants during the killings, her main substances of choice, naphtha and ether. During the proceedings she was characterized as a liar and highly strung, but was according to doctors, not insane. They also stated that Dagmar Overby was without motive for the killings, though the financial motives can clearly be established. Her boyfriend Svensson's role in the killings has remained unclear, even though he claimed to dislike children and had received money from Dagmar. During the trial, Dagmar's mood changed from impassive, to despair, to energetic joviality, which could be seen as a possible sign of mental illness. After two days of harrowing and dramatic witness interviews in court, 
the prosecutor wanted Dagmar convicted of premeditated murder. Dagmar's defense however, was an interesting one. They claimed that Dagmar Overby had been a tool for a flawed society and for uncaring mothers. The defense refused that Dagmar had intended to kill the children, and stated that she was merely trying to serve the needs in society. Dagmar Overby was found guilty on all nine counts of murder. The jury's verdict was also very clear, they wanted the death penalty for Dagmar. The verdict was surprisingly not appealed. The last Danish woman who had been executed was in 1861, and as expected, Dagmar was pardoned on the recommendation of a state council meeting a month later. The only condition was that she would never be released. After the trial, the principal aspects of the case became the subject of debate. It was pointed out that both irresponsible mothers and fathers had to carry their fair share of blame in these situations. It was also argued that society had to assume greater responsibility for the large group of children who were born outside of marriage. Dagmar Overby was sent to the women's prison in Christianshavn, later being transferred to Vester Prison, where she died in 1929. The following year the death penalty was abolished in Denmark, although it was briefly reinstated for war crimes after World War II.